Hello and welcome to this homework problem. It's going to be from problem set 5 and it's going to be problem number 6. Now this is an important one in a lot of ways because um, one, it shows some of the power of StatCrunch and two, it also allows us to talk about critical values, how to calculate critical values, etc. So here's the question or the statement or whatever you want to call this. A researcher randomly selects six fathers who have adult sons and records the fathers and sons heights to obtain the data below. Determine if sons are taller than their fathers at the alpha equals 0.1 level. So alpha equals 0.1 level of significance. Also note that it says determine if sons are taller than. So it's greater than, so that's a one-tailed test. So we're not going to have to divide alpha by anything other than 1. Uh, the normal probability plot and box plot indicate that the differences are approximately normally distributed with no outliers. But we're actually going to create a box plot or side-by-side or -side box plot and just see if that works. So here's the first question. Obviously, there's, there's two populations here. There's fathers and there's sons, but are they independent? And the way that this is actually worded, especially down here in the question, using the differences father's height minus son's height, that tells us no, that this is a paired t-test, that we don't care about f all the father's heights separately and all the son's heights separately. We're comparing individual father-son pairs. So it's going to be a paired t-test, or a dependent uh, samples t-test. So we've got that. We've got it's a one-tailed, we hypothesize, or our alternative hypothesis is that sons are taller than their fathers, and alpha is 0.01, and I'm probably going to have to pop this back up just to, just because I'm going to forget some of those. Now the first step is, let's go into StatCrunch, and boom. See that symbol right there? If you mouse over, it's going to say click to copy table. Well, if you click on it, you can do a lot more you can open this data in StatCrunch. So I'm going to click on that and let's open the data in StatCrunch. So here's StatCrunch. Look at that, the data is already in there. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger because I can. Let's look at the box plots. Graphics, box plot, and now we get to choose the columns. We want to look at box plot of the heights of the fathers and the heights of the sons. I'm going to hit next. I'm not exactly sure what next would give. We can draw boxes horizontally. That might be fun. There's another next. I don't know what that could be. You know, we can specify things. OK, create the graph. So when we do that, this pops up. I'm going to kind of make it wider. The top is the distribution for the heights of the sons. The bottom is the distribution for the heights of the fathers. Now, the problem said that these were normally distributed. So I'm going to just pop that up again. It says the normal probability plot and the box plot indicate the differences are approximately normally distributed with no outliers. OK, I, it doesn't really look normally distributed to me, especially the height of the fathers. but problem said, let's assume that they're normally distributed. So we're going to assume they're normally distributed. Now note that this really isn't a good way of visualizing the data, because this is the sons separately and the fathers separately. And we're supposed to look at fathers minus sons together. So how can we do that? To see how we do that, let's go over here to StatCrunch and do some fun stuff. And now one thing that we may want to do is just calculate, and let's see the problem again said father's height minus son's height. So we could calculate a column of father's heights minus son's heights. We could. This is not important for the problem itself, but this is kind of interesting in, in, in looking at a box plot of this, or, or, or graphics are really important. So we'll go into data, and we're going to compute expression compute expression. And when we do that, this pops up. And remember, we want father's height minus son's height. So we'll double click on height of fathers, minus, double click on height of sons, and compute. 
Notice we now have a column of father's heights minus son's heights. Also notice that they're all negative. So let's go ahead and look at a box plot of just that. Box plot, that difference, create graph. Here it is. Notice that it looks like everything is below zero. So it really does look as though sons are taller than their fathers. OK, let's get down to some real statistics. Not that that stuff wasn't real. But let's go ahead and figure out this t-test, two sample, paired, so it's a dependent samples. Stat, t-statistics, paired. When we do that, we specify sample 1 is in height of fathers. Sample 2 is in height of sons. Next, we hypothesize that this, the alternative is is less than zero. Hopefully, I mean, I'm here looking at my hands, seeing left, right, less than, greater than. And we're going to hope it's less than. Uh, I don't need to store that. We're going to do our calculations. So here's what Stack Crunch gives us. Father minus sons, less than zero. That actually means sons are taller than fathers. Pause to make sure that you understand why that is. Thanks for unpausing. The sample difference is the average of those differences. Standard error, degrees of freedom, is n minus 1. because This is essentially a one sample test. There's our test statistic and our p-value. Our p-value is less than alpha. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the alternative is correct. In this case, that means that the height of the sons actually is taller than the height of the fathers, or greater than the height of the fathers. So how does that translate over here to this problem? Conclusion regarding h naught. We do reject. We know we reject because p is less than alpha. Our test statistic is negative 5.64. t naught is our test statistic. It's going to be less than our t sub alpha. So you may be asking, how do we know what t sub alpha is? Well, we know this by going to our t table. Now recall that this is a one-tailed test, so we don't have to divide our alpha by anything other than 1. We know that alpha is equal to 0.1, so we care about this column. And we know our degrees of freedom is 5, which is n minus 1. So our critical value is going to be a negative 1.476. Negative 1.476. And our observed test statistic actually is less than that negative 1.476. So this is the correct option. Check answer. Woohoo, we did it. So the really cool thing about this problem, or there's lots of cool things, one is that we're able to test pairwise dependent samples. Two, I showed you how to create box plots both of the two samples independently, which actually didn't make sense, and for the samples pairwise, which really was related to the null hypothesis. And I actually showed you how to calculate this column rather easily. A lot of stuff here you can do a stat crunch. Very, very powerful. Really, the best way to learn this is just get in here and play with it. Try to see what all of the options mean. Well, I hope this was helpful for you. Take care. Have a great day.